Yes, it's alive. This is part two of the, uh, well, cliffhanger from the last video. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to keep these videos to 20 minutes or less. Uh, so, hopefully, um, you enjoy this uh, conclusion to uh, the non disaster disaster. Thanks for watching. All right. Masters are on. Engine information system. EIS. Let's wait for that to boot up. A few moments later. ET accept. And yeah. Now I know it's all those. Good. Fuel pump on. Throttle is at full idle. Full choke. Mags both on. Clear prop. No one in the hangar. Alright. Let's see what happens. instantly. We didn't want to run again.
Well, I call that a success. That engine was running way smoother. Oh my word. Uh, I had to set the idle. The idle was so low that it would have, engine would have uh, died. You probably saw me with the wrenches there. Very carefully next to that spinning prop. But, yeah, it, uh, once I got the idle set, I set it around 2200 RPM, 2100 RPM, somewhere around there and uh, with the throttle all the way down. I did notice that even after doing that, if I move the engine up in RPM and then dropped it slowly, it dropped way down and came back up again. Again, not being familiar with this engine. Is that normal for this engine? It might be. I've heard other engines do that watching uh, you guys fly your Challengers with 503s. So, but, smooth running. Oh my word, what a difference. Changing that needle valve setting. Um, yeah, moving it uh, up one, making it a little bit richer. That made all the difference in the world. Uh, about 10 seconds after I started it, I turned the throttle off. I had to start it twice because, again, it's, I, I set it back right down to idle and the idle was set way too low. Like It, would have, it wouldn't have run. So there was adjustments there that were needed. But uh, the choke is working perfect. I turned it off within about 10 seconds of starting the engine uh, with a pretty cold engine. And uh, I still have to balance those carburetors. I'm not happy with how I balanced it. I did it mechanically. I'm going to have to hook up some vacuum gauges on that. But that will be in the spring. Yes, that's the last engine start. Um, the engine fogging, it was drawing oil. But I didn't like how little it was drawing. It was drawing oil. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. I don't know. I'll talk to John over at uh, Rotac Service because he makes these things. Is that how much it's supposed to draw? You know? Learning experience. I'll let you guys know. But I did take the can, as you probably saw, and I squirted fogging oil into the engine. According to the instructions, five to ten seconds worth. Well, that's a lot. Now, the engine was stumbling there a bit and what have you, but got them in both cylinders and uh, there was some smoke coming out of the back. Not quite enough to fog for mosquitoes. You know, these winter mosquitoes, they can really be a bugger. They, they, when they bite you, you get frostbite. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I did some additional fogging on that engine. That's why I left the uh, uh, air cleaner off and um, so I'm, I'm pretty satisfied that I can uh, close that engine up uh, for the rest of the winter and it's sufficiently lubricated. And uh, um, now I'm going to be looking at that charging circuit. So this isn't the end of the video. This is just me making a um, mid-video monologue as to how happy I am that the engine actually is running and I don't need to send it in. So yeah, it was carb settings, the needle jets and, and the floats. Uh, one of them was correct, the other one way off. It would have, uh, you know, the way it was set, for my guess, um, it barely had any fuel in that float bowl because it was mostly closed. So, um, yeah, now that it's adjusted properly, it's getting the right amount of fuel, and I think that was a lot of the problem. That and and the uh, the rich mixture and uh, uh, and the idle settings. So, I'm rambling. Let's get on with the uh, checking out the uh, the electrical for the stator. Not much to do there. It was not producing AC voltage. I am just going to go and look and see if there's continuity. So another couple minutes and I'll be closing off this video. So bitter patter. Let's get out. This is an El Chico test meter, but that doesn't matter. Uh, all I'm looking for here is continuity. I don't know if you can see my face or not. I might have the camera angle wrong. Just need to put one off because I don't want to measure continuity through the charge controller. All right. Wide open. 
it is wide open. Okay, well, that is, uh, uh, well, I was actually kind of hoping that it was broken wire somewhere. Let's see. I will, uh, carry on Let's see if my connector that I put on those new connectors I didn't hook that up by the way it's still loose let's see if that uh, connector that I installed maybe the problem is there let's find out okay this is my charging just make sure mm -hmm. Okay. Now, let's just tuck you in here so I can see that display out. Oh, maybe I'll see if I can tuck it in in such a way that you guys can see it as well. Uh, I know it'll be upside down, but it's okay. It don't matter. Oy, 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 oy. Ooh, I think it's nice and warm. Warm my fingers up. Okay. Uh, I know you probably can't see that. Uh, let's see, maybe I can do it like this. There we go. A little precarious. I don't know. I don't know if you can see that. Hope you can. Okay. One on one side. Nope. One on the other. Wide open. Okay. Well, if it were a, if there were a continuity, you would see, you know, those numbers change. But uh Actually, that shows 3.5 ohms. It's actually quite a bit of resistance for these leads. Should be zero. And there is no zero function on this, so because it's a really cheap, cheap, cheap <laughs> test meter. It's it's barely a test meter. So yeah. Plugging it onto here is nothing. Okay, um, just to test continuity going the other way, I'm going to short out the lines at the charge controller. And I'm going to test them here and just make sure I've got continuity, because right now it should be open. So I've got nothing there. Okay, one test meter there, one test lead there. Touching them. Don't touch. Don't touch. No touchy. No. All right. Okay, good. That's open. those lines out. I'll be right back in a second. Okay, let's check the integrity of this. Let's and there we go. 3.5 ohms. Which, it's a bit short. The 3.5 is actually these leads by the looks of it. So, from here to the charge controller is okay. From here, back is open. Well, that means, unfortunately, I gotta remove the engine. Oh, boy. I'm not looking forward to that. 
Yuck. But it's got to be done, so I will have to pull this engine out one more time. Oh joy. Okay. Let's uh, carry on. I'm not pulling the engine out today. Okay, I'm going to close off this video here uh, because I am also going to be heading out. Time. <laughs> I got to go home. It's, uh, it's Sunday evening and it's late and I got laundry to do. Yeah. <laughs> Domestic chores. So, what did we find out today? We found out that the engine is running fine. That is, it was just carburetor setting. Those needle jets was primary. The idle is secondary. The floats weren't adjusted correctly. So all of that's done. The carbs are not balanced properly. That's going to be done in the spring when I start the engine up again. I just fogged it, fogged it good. And um, I'm going to put the air cleaner back on so I can put the air cleaner cover on. And I haven't received those plugs yet for the exhaust. But when they come in, I'm going to plug the exhaust so that no air flows through that engine, causing corrosion. So, I mean, it's fogged, so it should be better. But fogged and plugged up is even better. Okay, uh, and we find that the, the uh, stator windings, it's wide open. And uh, that means the engine's got to be pulled off, and i got to find out what went wrong with the stator. I am hoping, I am hoping... It is a broken wire that can be repaired, I'm hoping, because then it's easy. I can take the engine off, I can fix it right away, I can test it, test the stator with probably a better test meter than this. Well, actually, this one probably work. Uh, and then reassemble the engine, test it again before I mount it this time to make sure I've got the right continuity. Um, I couldn't find any specs on that, though. I'm going to look in that book and see, does it see what you should be reading for a good stator. Um, I don't imagine it'll be too high a resistance. Uh, if I were to guess, I would, I would, you know, under 20 ohms. But there'd be something, you know, it, whatever it is, I will try to find out. And uh, maybe I can call somebody that say, hey, can you put a test meter on yours and just let me know what you read as far as uh, uh, resistance going to that stator? that is working and um, and then I'll you know when I fix this one if I can fix it if then I will know what to look for um, so I mean it could be uh, could be a break in the in the windings and the stator itself and um, yeah but happy day the engine's fine carbs are fine stator sucks and uh, that's it so I'm gonna uh, close it up here um, Pack it up. Got a few things to do. A little bit of cleanup over here to do. Pack up my uh, my tools and whatnot, and make this place uh, a little more presentable. Thanks for following along. I do appreciate it, and um, hopefully uh, you got something out of this as uh, as much as I've gotten out of it, other than the frustration. And um, yeah, it's winter time. It's hockey season. So, well, I even say this: if it's not hockey season, keep your stick on the ice. We'll see you again here in the hangar. Bye for now. What a relief it was that the engine ran so smooth. I mean, it was amazing how buttery smooth it was running. So, that part's done. I'm happy. Uh, now i got to pull the engine. Nah, I'm not happy. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. See you again.